Hello and welcome to Intro to Data Management Plans from ICPSR. As you might already know, ICPSR is one of the world's largest social sciences data archives. I'd like to introduce you to your hosts, Chelsea Goforth and Shane Redman, Data Project Managers at ICPSR. Chelsea and Shane, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna. Okay, so what is a data management plan, or a DMP, as you'll hear us reference it? A data management plan is a written document that describes the data that you expect to generate or otherwise acquire throughout your research project. It explains how you intend to manage the data during the project, as well as your plan for long-term preservation and data sharing, even after the project has ended. Some of the common elements that are included in a data management plan include a description of the types and formats of all of the data you expect to acquire, a description of the accompanying documentation, such as code books or user guides, and metadata that will be produced to help understand the data, information about the repository or mechanism that you have chosen to archive your data for the long term and share it with other researchers, and information about your project's informed consent process. We will discuss these and additional elements that are typically included in a data management plan in greater detail later on in this presentation. So why should a researcher write a data management plan? There are many reasons why it is a good idea to write a data man management plan. One increasingly common reason is that it is required. Many funding agencies have started to require applications for research support to include a data management plan or some sort of data sharing and dissemination plan. Funders want to extend the impact of their research dollars. So writing a data management plan showing that the data will eventually be accessible to other researchers for use, both now and in the future, allows the funder to see the long-term value and impact of their research dollars to the scientific community. A data management plan also helps formalize the process of data management throughout the research project and provides a record of what the researcher intended to do. For example, a question might arise in the middle of the data gathering process about how or when to store the data. Looking back to the data management plan can be a helpful reminder of what you plan to do with the data from the start. Writing a data management plan also allows the researcher to identify any weaknesses in the project early on. Writing a DMP forces the researcher to think through the types of issues that may be encountered throughout the project. For example, protecting respondents' identities may be something that you think is a natural part of your research project, but writing a data management plan forces you to think through the practical steps of ensuring that this actually happens, such as what files may need to be de-identified prior to archiving the data or sharing the data with others. Similarly, determining certain elements of data management at the beginning stage of a research project can help save time later on. For example, having a repository chosen and included in your plan ensures that you won't run into any issues with the repository being unable to accept your data format later on when you're actually ready to archive the data. Lastly, writing a data management plan encourages transparency in the scientific process. Sharing data and other information about your research project with other researchers encourages and promotes replicability, accountability, and efficiency. So who is involved in writing a data management plan? Ultimately, the PI and or members of the research team are responsible for writing the data management plan for their own project. However, the PI and research team should consult several others to ensure the information provided in the data management plan is accurate and complete. If the data management plan is part of a grant proposal, you should check with the funding agency to see if there are any special required elements or topics that need to be addressed in the data management plan. Additionally, the Institutional Review Board, or IRB, at the PI's institution or institutions, if there are multiple PIs or co-PIs, should be consulted. IRB requirements and preferences vary across institutions, so it is important to explain to your IRB what your plans are for sharing the data from your project, as their requirements may have implications for the information that you provide or the language that you use in your data management plan. 
Similarly, once you have chosen a repository for your data, it's a good idea to contact someone there or to research their website to see if they have any guidance on the various elements that will be discussed in the DMP. For example, if you choose to archive your data at ICPSR, you can contact us and we are happy to review your data management plan to ensure that the information you include in it aligns with our standards and practices. Our website provides information about ICPSR that would typically be included in a data management plan, and you can also find a sample DMP and recommended language for informed consent documents on the website. All right, thanks Shane. <clears throat> so next you may be wondering when to write a data management plan, and the answer is, always, is nearly always as soon as possible at the beginning of the data life cycle, when planning a new research project or when writing a new grant proposal. As Shane mentioned, DMPs are often required for funding requests, especially for proposals to large federal agencies like NSF or NIH, but also for many other funding sources as well. You'll note here that I've uh, linked to an excellent resource uh, from the Scholarly Publishing and Academic uh, Resource Coalition. Uh, they've compiled this great resource with information about data management and data sharing requirements from all of the federal funding agencies. Regardless of whether or not your funding agency requests a DMP though, writing one will be helpful even if not required for anyone who is at all concerned with re about research transparency, replication and reproducibility, or preservation for all of the reasons that Shane has previously discussed. You can find more information about the data life cycle from the ICPSR Guide to Social Science Data Preparation and Archiving, which is linked at the end of this presentation with the additional resources. But the important thing to note here is how important it is to think about a data management plan early on in a research project, even prior to other project startup activities. So given the importance of a data management plan, how exactly do you write one and what information is typically included? I'll run through several common elements typically included in a data management plan, but also note that not everything I mentioned will be applicable to every research project. You'll typically start by providing a description of the data and its collection. This includes a description of the nature and scale of the data to be produced by the project. For example, whether or not your project will include experimental data, observational data, models or simulations, video or images, software programs, applications, et cetera and how, when, and where you plan to collect those data. In addition, you can address how the data will be processed after collection, including information about which software or algorithms you'll use, and anything else relevant to your data management workflow and short-term data management. It's here that you'll specify the anticipated submission, distribution, and preservation formats for the data and related files, perhaps noting that these formats may be the same, and include a justification for the procedural and archival appropriateness of those formats. You might also describe the naming conventions, version control, and or quality assurance and control procedures that you intend to use. If relevant, you'll also want to address the origins of existing data that you'll use in this project. For example, how newly collected data will be combined with existing data, or any other details about the relationship between newly collected data and existing data as is relevant. Relatedly, you should also provide a description of metadata, which are the contextual details, the basic characteristics of the data, including any information important for using the data. You'll often hear metadata described as data about data, and they answer questions like who created the data, what does the data file contain, when and where were the data generated, and why and how were the data generated. Good descriptive metadata are essential for effective data use. This can include descriptions of instruments, parameters, units, files, and other temporal or spatial details. This section should also include a discussion of the metadata standards you plan to use, again, including a justification for the format chosen. We recommend using structured or tagged metadata, such as the XML format of the Data Documentation Initiative, or DDI, because of the flexibility that they offer in display. XML format is also preservation ready and machine actionable, and I've included a link here if you'd like more information about this. Next, you'll address the long-term storage, management, and backup of the data, including the physical and cyber resources and facilities that will be used for the effective preservation and storage of the research data by answering questions such as, how and where will you store copies of your research files to ensure their safety? How many copies will you maintain and how will you keep them synchronized? Here, you'll provide details about data security by describing the technical and procedural protections for information, including confidential information, and how permissions, restrictions, and embargoes will be enforced. In addition, you should specify the names of the individuals responsible for data management in the research project, 
or who will act as the responsible steward for the data throughout the data lifecycle. Many of these details can be addressed by providing information about your archiving and preservation plans, including identifying an appropriate archive for long-term preservation early on in your project. For example, you can write that by depositing data with ICPSR, your project will ensure that the research data are migrated to new formats, platforms, and storage media as required by good practice. Finally, in this section, you'll indicate how data will be selected for archiving, how long the data will be held, if applicable, and what your plans are for eventual transition or termination of the data collection in the future. Some repositories, like ICPSR, store data in perpetuity. However, if there's a compelling reason for why some of your data should not be preserved permanently, you should address the proper retention period and reasons in this section. Closely related are policies for access, sharing, and reuse. This section should include a description of how data will be shared, including access procedures, embargo periods, technical mechanisms for dissemination, and whether access will be open or granted only to specific user groups. A time frame for data sharing and publishing should also be provided, as well as a description of the intended future uses or users of the data. Importantly, this section will include any ethical or privacy issues with data sharing, including a discussion of how informed consent will be handled, how privacy will be protected, perhaps through restricted use data, any exceptional arrangements that might be needed to protect participant confidentiality or other ethical issues that may arise. You'll also describe here any obligations that exist for sharing collected data, including obligations from funding agencies, institutions, professional organizations, or any other legal requirements. And you might also indicate how the data should be cited by others and how the issue of persistent citation will be addressed, for example, uh, if the data set will have a digital object identifier or a DOI assigned to it. Next, you'll want to specify the entities or persons who will hold the intellectual property rights for the data and other information created by the project and how intellectual property will be protected if necessary. Also address whether or not these rights will be transferred to another organization for data distribution and archiving as we previously discussed. Any copyright issues or constraints should be noted here as well. For example, if you use copyrighted data collection instruments, including how the researcher will obtain permission to use and disseminated copyrighted materials. Lastly, although not on the slide, it's worth noting that sometimes researchers will also include budget information for their project in their data management plan. Specifically, information about personnel time for data preparation, management, documentation, and preservation, hardware and or software needed for data management, backup, security, documentation, and preservation, and or any costs associated with submitting the data to an archive. There are many options to archive data at a repository with no cost to researchers, including at ICPSR, However, it's still a good idea to consult with your repository of choice when writing your data management plan to ensure any cost information is accurate and that the repository can handle the data you plan to archive. We'll close with information about where to find additional resources on data management plans. You can see several links on this last slide. In particular, I'll highlight the first link to the ICPSR guidelines for effective data management, which includes several examples of how to include each of these elements that I just discussed. Many thanks for taking the time today to watch this webinar. We hope it was helpful in uh, providing some preliminary information about data management plans. And if you have any questions or are interested in having a conversation about your data archiving options, please don't hesitate to reach out. Our contact information is here, or you can go also go to our website, icpsr.umich.edu, and you can use our general contact email, icpsr-help at umich.edu if you have any questions.